Life has gotten worse over the last six months. Four years ago, I fell madly in love with a co-worker's sister and rushed off to get married with a stupid grin on my face and without a single thought in my head. I believed she was everything I was looking for, but now I realized I was projecting most of that onto a blank slate. She played the part and had the looks, but I never saw what lurked beneath the surface. Let this serve as a lesson to you, take your time and be confident. Sheila knew how to make a man feel like he was one in a million and all in the world. I realized now that she was an expert at getting what she wanted, she played me like she played everyone else, and I never saw the real woman behind the facade until she decided I didn't matter anymore. Over the last year, she had become increasingly aloof. She went from caring and attentive to disinterested and detached. The change was slow at first, but her mistake was that in the last six months, the change was fast and she let me see it. She was out late with the girls, but I knew most of our friends couldn't stand her, they were just pretending for my sake. They saw through her long before I did. I knew what I had to do, so I called him, his name is Harvey Madison, he's a private investigator. I didn't need him to tell me something was wrong. I knew it myself. I needed facts. Sheila had kept me in the dark, and I wanted him to shed light on what she was up to. It only took him a week. I felt such a fool. Sheila was a very busy girl, and I was a clueless husband. Harvey was very helpful, he provided me with an official signed report, along with photos and videos, and I immediately did two things, I made an appointment with my doctor to have a wide range of blood tests for all known STDs, and I made an appointment with an attorney specializing in family law, family law is code for divorce. It is rightly said, a picture is worth a thousand words. A good photograph speaks to you. Can you imagine what a video of your wife sleeping with some jerk says? It doesn't speak, it screams, get a divorce now. My lawyer helped me a lot. He said, forget what you know, don't confront her until we're ready and don't tip her off. Since you're worried about STDs, you probably either already have them or you don't. Just in case you have the flu right now, you can buy a little bottle of diced onions at the grocery store. Buy one, stick a pinch in your nose, or wipe the juice in your eyes before you go in the house, and I promise the tears will flow on their own, and your nose will drain. She won't even try to have sex with you then. If you run out of excuses, go on a business trip. Can you trust your boss? I said I could. He should send you to the beach for a week. We both got a good laugh out of that. That's how the wheels of divorce came into motion. I started thinking, I wonder how this is all going to play out. Will she cry? Will she deny everything until I show her the pictures? Will she make excuses, blame me, say it didn't mean anything, or just curse me? She'll curse me. I almost look forward to it but the reality was much sweeter. It had been a week since my second meeting with Harvey. My lawyer worked quickly. I had a divorce filing, and I was ready for a confrontation with the B. Turns out, she was ready too, and she threw me a surprise. I got home, and there was a Mercedes in the driveway. I had to park on the street. I knew this car well, although I had only seen it in pictures and had never met the driver. I stepped inside, and the grinning faces of the A and the W immediately appeared in front of me. Bill, sit down. We need to talk. It was so hard not to smile. I wanted to burst into laughter but restrained myself. This was going to be more fun than I'd anticipated. Bill, I've been unhappy for a long time. Shelley, we've only been married three years. We've known each other for four. You've been visibly unhappy for a year. You've been having an affair for at least four months. How am I doing? I mean, yeah, I guess it's about that. Did you know I suspected? Well then, it won't be a surprise to you, Bill. I'm leaving you, and I want a divorce. I'm entitled to half of everything, but if you keep things simple, I won't take more than I'm owed. That's very kind of you. No need to be sarcastic. You mean to say it's not kind? What? No, I mean, yes. Stop changing the subject. This marriage isn't working. I'm out of here. Good. 
that's all you have to say? I looked at the smirking ass behind her and nodded. Who's the asshole, Bill? Don't be rude, it doesn't make you look good. You don't need to know my friend's name. He's only here to give me moral support. At this, I had to laugh. What kind of support? What in your behavior constitutes moral support, Sheila? I don't deserve it, Bill. I didn't mean for this to happen. It just happened. I've been a loving wife to you. I've indulged your inadequate efforts in the bedroom. I cooked you dinners, I took good care of you, but I deserve more than that. It's that simple. Oh, it's not simple at all, Sheila. You made the private investigator I hired run all over town for a week. I laughed, looking at that s, so, Henry, does your wife Barbara know about your affair with Sheila? There was no way they were expecting this. Henry's face went pale, and he sank into the chair behind him while Sheila was left to act the goldfish, mouth open, lips moving, nothing coming out. I'll take that as a no. I glanced at my watch and said, she'll know about it any minute. Panic read on his face, obviously, he wasn't prepared for Barbara finding out. Tell me, Henry, do you think a wife who cheats on our husband can be faithful to her lover? Sheila's panic intensified, and she began to shake. I walked across the room and held out several 8 by 10 glossy sheets. Here, Henry, these are pictures of Sheila sleeping with a guy named George Ellison last Tuesday. Henry's face reflected shock, fear at my approach, and rage at the sight of Sheila having fun with George. I guess he didn't know. And yes, my dear wife, at this very moment, George is being handed pictures of your adventures with Henry. Also, George's wife Peggy is getting pictures of you and George playing hide the salami, so she will surely have thoughts to share with George. I wonder what George will say to you at work on Monday. Sheila had that classic deer in the headlights look. At that very moment, the phone rang. I wonder if it's George. You'd better answer it, I can entertain Henry until you get back. Sheila didn't move. No? Then you might want to take a look at them. It looks like Henry's been as busy as you have been, and when he is not making deposits at Sheila's bank, he's bending his secretary over his desk. I gave Sheila some pictures of Henry sleeping with a very lush-breasted redhead in his office. This seemed to bring her out of her stupor. So let's see if we've covered everything, Sheila. You slept with Henry behind my back, and now his wife Barbara knows about it. Henry had his secretary behind your back. You also slept with George behind Henry's back, and now Henry knows it, and George's wife Peggy knows about your relationship with George. And I have attached some pictures of you with Henry and Henry with his secretaries, so she understands what kind of whore her husband prefers. That reminds me, I got tested for STDs, but I'm still waiting for the results. You might be thinking the same thing. Barbara will probably divorce Henry, Peggy will probably divorce George, and George will probably fire you. Oh, that's what I forgot. I made sure your company got the same pictures of you and George together, as well as a lawsuit from me because you rolled George's salami on your lunch hour. I guess neither of you will have work on Monday. I also gave Henry's company pictures of him sleeping with a red-headed secretary, so his employment prospects are not good. I turned to Henry and said, sorry, old man, but I just don't like your smarty face. When I finished, there was silence in the room. I managed to wipe the smug looks off their faces and headed to the kitchen for a beer. I could hear voices in the living room, but I wasn't interested in what they were talking about. When I returned, Henry was gone, and Sheila was sitting on the couch. I took a pause to calm down. I didn't want the neighbors to say they heard me threatening her. Here are the divorce papers, Sheila. Read them, get a lawyer, sign them. If my lawyer doesn't hear back from you, we'll send you to court. It's a no-fault state, and the division of property will be fair, but that doesn't mean I can't or won't send pictures to your parents, sister, cousins, and every friend you've ever had. I waited until the last remark reached consciousness. If you expected me to move out, you can forget it. I like my own bed. You can move into the guest room until the divorce is resolved, but if you bring any of your how many lover buddies into the house, 
please understand that I will kill you both. I'm willing to play by the rules, but I will not be a cuckold in my own home. I hope you take me seriously when I say this, Sheila. You're not worth going to jail over, but there's a limit to everything. In the morning, Sheila was gone. I had no idea where she had gone, and I didn't care. 